So those crazy double E's over in, over in Nethkin, they have a motor that, uh, you know, it's liquid cooled and they're going to store uh, a fluid that is, uh, you're going to cool, cool the thing. We're going to store it in a tank up on the roof and uh, we need to pump it from the power lab up to the roof. We're going to do that with a hose that has a diameter of 1.1 inch. Uh, the tank holds a mass of 2,423 kilograms and it takes two and a half hours to fill the tank. What we want to know is what is the velocity of the fluid as it enters the tank on the roof. Okay. So what kind of a formula should we use for this, you think? Okay, we know, uh, we know how much fluid it needs to go up there and how long it's going to take to go up there. We also know a density of the fluid, right? From those pieces of information, I should be able to get something that's called a, uh, a mass flow rate, okay? And actually, because we know the density, I should be able to turn it into a volumetric flow rate. Is there anything that relates a volumetric flow rate to a velocity? Okay, going back up here to the beginning where we have our formulas. All right. Do I see anything that has a volumetric flow rate in it as well as a velocity? All right. I see that right there. Q is volumetric flow rate, V is velocity, and A is cross-sectional area. Okay, so Q is equal to VA. That's our big equation that we're going to try to use here. All right, well, how do I get Q, though? Okay, maybe we'll look up here and see if there's any other place that there's Q. All right. Maybe we don't have anything directly that gives us Q, but Q is, is, I mean, it's easy enough to figure it out just based on what it is. It's amount of volume that flows per unit of time. Okay. So one of the ways of thinking about that is we know the mass flow rate, which a lot of times uh, you can get that with something that's called M dot, or you can represent it with a variable M dot. Okay. What this is, is it's going to be the amount of mass divided by the amount of time. Pretty simple for that one, right? 24, 23 kilograms per 2.5 hours. Okay? So if I want to change that into a volumetric flow rate Q, how do I eliminate mass and get volume instead? Okay, density is equal to mass over volume, right? If you have a density value, that gives you mass per volume. So in this case, though, we want to get rid of mass and get volume, right? So what do I do? Okay, how about if I multiply this by um, 1,023 kilograms for a cubic meter, right? Because it tells us right here that's the density of this fluid. And that should give me my, ma my volumetric flow rate. Okay. Notice there what happens is your kilograms cancel out, right? And you end up with cubic meters per hour. Now, a lot of you might say, I might not want units of hours. Okay. Well, if I want to get rid of my units of hours, what should I do? Maybe what kind of units do we want instead? Okay, and there are again 3,600 seconds in an hour. Okay, so now what I have is a number of cubic meters per second. Well, that might be useful. Yes? Okay. Uh, the question that was just asked is, isn't flow rate liters per minute? Liters per minute is another valid way of expressing flow rate, 
but it's not the only way, okay? Because when you express a flow rate, what you, all you need to do is you need to have a certain amount of volume divided a certain amount of time, okay? And so there's multiple ways of doing that. Like a common one that's used in the US system of units would be like GPH. What do you think GPH might stand for? Gallons per hour is not an uncommon unit to see whenever you're dealing with a, a volumetric flow rate in the US system. So it's a good question. There are multiple ways of measuring the uh, volumetric flow rate. Okay, well, so what do I do with that? Uh, I can calculate it, I guess. It's one of the things I can do. <clears throat> so let's put in 24, 23 over 2.5 times, okay, here I've got 1 over 1023, and then I've got 1 over 3600, okay, 2.632 times 10 to the minus 4, and this is going to be in cubic meters per second. All right, well, what do I do with that? Well, I'm, that's actually most of what I need, right? This up here, I can now write it as 2.632 times 10 to the minus 4 cubic meters per second will be equal to the velocity, which I believe um, that's what we're trying to find, right? Times the area of the hose. And the area of the hose is going to be equal to pi times the diameter of the hose, 1.1 inch squared over 4. Well, now we might end up with another issue again. Why is that? Okay, because I have inches in there and those inches may or may not play well with my meters. So what should I do? Okay, tell you what, I'm gonna grab this and work it down here so I have enough room. All right, I need to now multiply by, okay, 2.54 centimeters Per inch, but that should be squared. Okay, that'll knock out my inches squared and put in centimeters squared. Well, what else should I do? Okay, well, there's a hundred centimeters in a meter, which I can also square that, and now what I'm left with is that. Um, a meter squared on the left is going to get knocked out with a meter squared on the right. It'll leave me with a value that'll just be in meters per second, right? I'll leave one meters there on one meter on the left and knock out the other meters squared. Okay, which is good. So the velocity just ends up being uh, this value. All right, I tell you what, I'm going to take that value and store it, this is in case you didn't know you could do this with a calculator, I'm going to store this value into A. Okay, that way I can use it whenever I write this equation. All right, and I'll write the equation first by selecting A and setting it equal to the velocity, which I'm going to use X for that, multiplied by pi times 1.1 squared over 4 times 2.54 over 1 okay times whoops what else did I need on that part that I missed that should be squared right times here I've got 1 over 100 and that should be squared Okay, and so I've entered that whole equation 
So I should be able to solve it. When I hit Shift Solve, it asks me, do you still want this value in A? The way you say yes is you hit the equal sign. Next, it says, what do you want to use for your initial guess for x? It won't actually matter for this problem. If you thought it did, you could enter something at this point. Okay, And it will solve, and it will give you 0.4292. Okay. This should end up in units of meters per second. Okay, and that you can see is right there, F. Okay, you got a question? Yes, sir. Question that was just asked is, couldn't I just plug it into the velocity formula? Let me see. I haven't actually looked at the velocity formula, so let me check. Okay. For the velocity formula, you have uh, volume over cross-sectional area times time. It looks like you could with one uh, conversion to get your mass into, if, I, if I'm looking at this correctly, yeah, to get your mass into volume. Um, it looks like you could probably use that. Yeah. But I took you the long way around, you know, hopefully we were able to smell the roses on the way. All right. Any questions, any other questions on that one? All right, let's do one more. <clears throat> 